All right, welcome to my video. This is five Vanguard funds that'll have hookers spitting in your mouth in retirement. The first one, of course, is the often talked about Vanguard 500 index fund, Admiral shares with an expense ratio of 0 0.04. And this was one of the first uh, index funds on the market. Wow. I mean, there's always been other index funds, like their Wellington fund goes back to 1929, but it's gonna have a minimum investment if you have $3,000. So if you need this fund and you don't have it, I don't know what to tell you, maybe try robbing a guy or slip and fall in a Walmart and sue them for $3,000 or sell a kidney. Whatever you gotta do, do it. But so the one year is really what you should be looking for is the 10 year. Um, it's returned 13.95%. So if you had invested $10,000 in 2010, you'd have about $36,000. Now it's a four on their risk. So it's gonna be more volatile. And as you, you're gonna notice between the growth and the total stock market, most of it is almost the exact same, but here, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, Berkshire, Procter & Gamble, Visa, and JP Morgan. JP Morgan's being off is what's throwing this down. But yeah, that's the Vanguard 500 index fund. Here's the Vanguard fund that I own and the, the most amount of money I have in a fund is in here. This is the Vanguard total stock market. They created it in 1992. And it has everything in here. Small, mid cap, large growth. Um, same 0 0.04 expense ratio. Minimum investment. Like I said before, try robbing a guy to get that $3,000. You can also get this as an ETF. The only thing I don't like about ETFs is it's just ease basically you can just take a round number just throw it into your whatever number you want 100 bucks a month and it goes into your mutual fund where with an etf you have to have the exact amount of money unless of course you're on robin hood or one of those apps then you can just dollar cost average into it but pretty much the same ten thousand in 2010 you have thirty three thousand dollars now so it performs slightly less than the s p 500 but if you look i mean their top 10 is almost the exact same holdings but the reason i actually use this fund instead of the s p 500 is because through my work my 401k it's all in an S&P 500 fund. So I was just like, eh, it's a lot of replication, but I'll just go with the total stock market in this case anyways. Then got a favorite of mine. This is the uh, Vanguard US Growth. I have this fund. It's the oldest growth fund, Vanguard's oldest fo growth fund of well-known well blue chips. Um, this one's a little bit more expensive at 0.39%, but then again, for the results you're getting, you can't really beat it. And if you have $50,000, you can get it down to 0.28 with the Admiral shares. So, it's a risk of a four, return 17% in the last 10 years. If you put 10,000 in 2010, You'd have $52,337. It's up 29.7% this year. Most of that because of the bullshit quantitative easing. But even again, there's a lot of layover between this U.S. growth and, um, and uh, the S&P 500 in the total stock market. Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet, Tesla, Shopify, MasterCard. Facebook, Netflix, Visa. This is going, I'm actually building this up more.
but this is probably, I'm gonna build this up to a higher level in my portfolio. I'm gonna try and even out my four funds that I actually do own. And uh, I wanna make them 25% each. But this is one I'm thinking about adding to my portfolio. So all of these, except they, I wouldn't have the S&P 500, but these four funds is what I'm thinking about going with in here and I have an information technology fund but you know just to add diversification I know that's out of style because everybody thinks that you don't need it now but whatever everybody's got their own style it's a 43 percent expense ratio it was created in 1981 once again three thousand dollars to get in sell a kidney I don't know what to tell you if you had invested $10,000 in 2010, you'd have about $26,000. This fund isn't going to return generally like the U.S. funds. No, it returned over the 10-year, not bad, 11.13%, but also that's almost three percentage points lower than the S&P 500. So, see... This is why you're a little bit more diversified. You got to hold a Europe and uh, I think European stocks are beaten down pretty good and might start rebounding, but you got Tencent, Alibaba. I don't know what that is. Tesla, Mercado Libre, Tile Education, Amazon, of course, Caring SA and Spotify. But yeah, this is an interesting choice if you're looking for an international fund. And of course, last one, I personally have uh, the second most amount of money in this fund. It's an actively managed fund. So of course, it's gonna have a little bit higher expense ratio at 0.32, $3,000 to get in. I believe it's $50,000 for the Admiral shares. We'll just double check, yep. But that lowers it to 0.27%. And he invested $10,000 in 2010. Yeah, $43,100. Boy, I wish I put all my money in that U.S. growth fund. And the information technology fund. But healthcare is a good section to be in. I think it's returned 16% since 1984. Over the last bull run, it produced 15.49% results, which is above the S&P 500, and it's up 18.96 this year. And here's its top 10 holdings. I don't know why there's any real estate in there, but biotech. Sort of curiosity, what is? And this is only up, total stock market's only up 6% this year. But anyways, that is five Vanguard funds that will have hookers spitting in your mouth in retirement. I'm going to look for some more. We might even do some other famous funds. But yeah, if you watched and you like, give it a like down there or don't. I don't know how this all works. But uh, if you watched all the way through, thanks for watching. So I'm out.